Well, it's uh, spooky season again, although around here it's spooky season all year long. And today we're taking a look at The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror 7. Debuting October 27th, 1996, Treehouse of Horror 7 is done with the wraparound segments and cemetery. Instead, they waste no time by having Homer set himself on fire while lighting a jack-o'-lantern and death killing the Simpsons family as part of its couch gag. The first segment for the episode, The Thing and I, has strange noises coming from the attic that wake Bart and Lisa. The following morning, they ask their parents if there's anything up in the attic, but Homer just brushes them off as if they're crazy. Homer then grabs a bucket of fish heads so he can go feed it, with it being located in the attic, basically confirming to Bart and Lisa that there is something up there. That night, Bart notices something watching him from the vent in his room, and again the children ask what's upstairs. And you know what happens to nosy kids who ask too many questions? No, what happens? Something, something happens to nosy kids who ask questions? questions? That night, while Homer and Marge are away, the children go in the attic where they discover something has escaped from its chains. Terrified, the children run for their lives and hide inside a closet. You went into the attic? <gasps> I'm very disappointed and terrified. When Homer and Marge return home, they realize that to their horror, it's escaped. Hugo has escaped. Homer and Marge can no longer hide from the kids what's going on and reveal that Bart has a twin brother. So I have two brothers? Lisa, please. Yes, Bart, you have a twin brother. Dr. Hibbert is suddenly there, so we can give an exposition dump about just what is going on. When Bart and Hugo were born, Dr. Hibbert used a test called a soul smear, which revealed the left twin Hugo was pure evil. Not knowing what to do with Hugo, they decided the most humane thing would be to lock him up in the attic and feed him a bucket of fish heads once a week. The family leaves to find Hugo, while Bart is left behind to record the hockey game. But Hugo never left. Hugo captures Bart and ties him in the attic, where he plans on joining them back together as the separation is what drove him mad. I made a pigeon rat. Before he can go through it, Dr. Hibbert arrives and knocks Hugo out. But Hibbert notices that the scar is on the wrong side, and the evil twin was actually Bart all along. To make things right, Hugo and Bart are swapped, with Bart having to live in the attic forced to eat fish heads. The Thing and I is the best segment of the episode and the spookiest. It actually has some decently creepy moments and the music adds a nice atmosphere to it. While not specifically a spoof of anything in particular, The Thing and I does share very surface level similarities to the film Basket Case, which feature two conjoined brothers, with one being a hideous monster. What's in the basket? Open it. If you dare. Basket case. And a short story called Born of Man and Woman, written by legendary author Richard Matheson, about a young boy who's chained up in the basement and turns out to be a monster. I don't know if they were trying to comment on the whole nature versus nurture thing. Bart was the evil twin, but was raised in a loving home, and therefore didn't act evil. Whereas Hugo was the good twin. But because he was locked up and abandoned, he lost his marbles and went crazy. I might be overthinking a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror segment. The next segment, the Genesis Tub, drops the spooky vibe of the first and is much more sci-fi. Lisa loses one of her baby teeth and decides to use it for a project for the school science fair. Bart comes in zapping Lisa with static electricity and she somehow transfers said electricity to her project. The following morning when she looks at her project, she notices it's growing mold, although upon further inspection, she's actually created life. Her tiny creations begin to evolve at a rapid pace, even outpacing our own technological advancements. Is that the school? Whoops, my finger slipped. Bart in classic Big Brother fashion starts destroying her little creation, thinking it's just a model city. But how hard was he pressing that he was able to leave a fingerprint in a tooth? That night, the tiny people decide to go on the offensive and attack Bart for what he did to their world. Bart threatens a retaliation against Lisa's people when they decide to shrink her down and bring her into their world. They see Lisa as a god. She was the one who created them, so it's understandable. They ask her to protect them from the devil, who is really just Bart. But being shrunk down will kind of make that difficult. Lisa tells them they'll need to make her normal size again in order to protect them, but the mere thought of having something that can make someone bigger is pure fantasy according to their scientist. <laughs> Bart returns and instead of destroying the tiny civilization like he had planned, he uses it as his own submission for the science fair. 
You can throw out the other projects. We have a winner. I love how Bart wins and they just toss the rest of the projects in the garbage. The segment then just abruptly ends with Lisa being stuck in the tub for the rest of her life. The Genesis tub is a throwaway segment. There really isn't much going on in this one. It's the shortest of the three and they don't do much with it. Why didn't they have some retaliation between the tub people and Bart? They could have easily escalated things and instead, Bart just uses it for the fair and it's over. This one is definitely a step down from the previous segment and this trend is only going to become more glaring as the series continues. The Genesis tub is a spoof of the Twilight Zone episode, The Little People. Though The Little People has a bit more going on and a fun twist at the end. <laughs> That's important now. You must not anger me. The segment was also mentioned in the South Park episode, Simpsons Did It, where it's pointed out that even The Simpsons borrows from other TV shows and movies. Yeah, in fact that episode was a ripoff of a Twilight Zone episode. The rings that surround Lisa when she shrunk down in size were also lifted from the 1927 film Metropolis. Not really a spooky segment, nor is it funny, this one can definitely be skipped. The final segment, Citizen Kang, is the longest of the bunch and more of a satire of politics than anything else. It starts with Homer fishing when he's abducted by aliens Kang and Kodos. Homer thinks the aliens want to probe him. Might as well get it over with. Stop. We have reached the limits of what rectal probing can teach us. But what they really want is in classic sci-fi tradition to be brought to Earth's, or in this case, America's leader. One problem though, this is just days away from the 1996 election between Bill Clinton and Bob Dole. With this complication added to the mix, Kang and Kodos decide to abduct both. What's happening? Is it noon already? The men are stripped and placed in tubes, which thankfully save our eyes from seeing things that would frighten even the most hardened souls. Although this single frame shows us we probably didn't have much to worry about. The aliens place them in some kind of stasis gel and then take over their likenesses using bioduplication technology. Homer is sent home drenched in rum, so no one will take anything he says seriously. Kind of like that time he saw an alien in the woods. <laughs> Please, don't hurt me. One of the funniest moments in the episode is when Homer comes in to tell his family he was abducted by aliens, but first has to lie to them and tell them he caught the biggest fish they had ever seen. Obviously no one believes Homer, especially when he points out that the aliens look like the two presidential candidates. Kang and Kodos do the typical media circuit trying to gain voters, while people within their own parties are confused as to why they're holding hands and walking together. We are merely exchanging long protein strings. If you can think of a simpler way, I'd like to hear it. Homer tries convincing everyone again that they're both aliens, but is tossed out by Secret Service. Homer, distraught because no one believes him, discovers the UFO hidden behind a very tiny bush that absolutely no one would have noticed. Homer drains the tubes holding the men and attempts to bring them back to Washington, but instead, hilariously, jettisons them both into space where they die. Homer crash lands the ship and reveals both candidates to be aliens. They're nothing but hideous space reptiles! But how was he able to rip off their heads when Kang and Kodos were both turned into the men? They weren't exactly wearing costumes. Even with this revelation, the people are still forced into voting for one of them because it is a two-party system. Don't blame me, I voted for Kodos. Go! Citizen Kang, while the longest segment of the bunch, isn't really spooky either. It's a step up from the Genesis tub, but it's really just a satire of politics. I do enjoy seeing Kang and Kodos, but the segment as a whole doesn't really fit the Halloween theme of previous years. It's a funny segment, so you'll definitely laugh, but it's definitely missing that spooky vibe. It makes no difference which one of us you vote for. Either way, your planet is doomed. The writers felt this segment broke some cardinal rules by naming specific people and times, which in turn dates it. But even with Clinton and Dole mentioned, I think you can still apply this to any election because it's always the same shit. The episode as a whole is a decent foray into the horror themed episodes, but it's starting to miss the horror aspect. The earlier Treehouse segments at times seem to just want to scare rather than make people laugh, and eventually even both. But outside of the very first segment, you can already feel the show beginning to show off some of its cracks. But with all that said, just how Halloween-y is the episode? In order to answer this question, I'm going to reach down into the 10th level of hell and bring back everyone's favorite. The Hollow Meter. A two on the Hollow Meter. 
not bad, but really it's all because of the spooky vibes from The Thing and I. Without that, this is easily a 1. Anyways, what do you think of Treehouse of Horror 7? Does it live up to the heights left by the older ones, or is this a misstep? Let me know down in the comments. Well, that's all for today. I hope you're having a great day and stay spooky!